If you want to play as Deku from My Hero Academia in Dungeons & Dragons, this is how you can do it. Because this is D&D Builds, where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons & Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. But the trick is that this build revolves around three different versions of Deku, otherwise known as Izuku Midoriya. Because in the anime, he receives a superpower, otherwise known as a quirk in the world of My Hero Academia, and on his journey to learn to control it, it kind of evolves in certain ways. But the best way to portray that is actually with three different builds. There's the early stages of the quirk, then after he gets more of a handle on it, which is kind of where we're at in the anime right now, then if you stick around till the end, we'll do a complete spoiler heavy dive on how to pull off all of the abilities that are locked within one for all. Most of them haven't been revealed outside of the manga, so it will be definite spoilers. And since we are talking about My Hero Academia, it seems only fitting that this video is sponsored by Southern New Hampshire University. They support creators like me to help spread the word that they have tons of classes to choose from, both online and in person, so you can learn how to become a game developer, designer, or plenty of other stuff because there's over 200 different degree programs to choose from. To check out SNHU and to help support this channel, just click on the link down in the description and request some more information. Thank you to SNHU for sponsoring this video. But now, back to the build. Before we dive into any of that, we gotta pick a race. And for every build, we're just gonna go with a variant human. This will give us some more flexibility because it allows you to take a feat right at first level. And briefly, I wanna cover the early stages of One For All. Because when Deku first gets this ability, he can't control it at all. And it completely destroys his body anytime he tries to unleash that power. So without diving too deep, it would be pretty straightforward. Rely pretty heavily on strength, dexterity, and constitution, and just go with a plain old barbarian. Treat going into a rage as unleashing the abilities of one for all, and then take it a step further because there's actually a barbarian that's infamous for its core ability actually harming you for using it. And that's by going with the barbarian subclass Berserker because when they go into a frenzy, they receive a level of exhaustion after they're done with their rage. And you can treat this as when Deku goes a little too overboard and completely obliterates parts of his body. But that's pretty much all he can do at that level. And just to make sure you're actually doing that with punches, use that feat from being a variant human to pick up the fighting initiate feat and grab unarmed fighting so you can do plenty of smashes. And that's a pretty straightforward way to go. You just take Barbarian all the way through all 20 levels, but you will still be hurting yourself pretty frequently. Where I really wanna dive in is where we're at currently in the anime, because this allows you to have a bit more control over your abilities and not completely destroy yourself every time. So we're still gonna be a variant human, which also grants you proficiency in an additional skill. So we're gonna grab insight because Deku is pretty good at understanding the wants and urges of those around him. And then we also have to choose a background. We're going to keep it pretty simple and go with a Quandrix student because you are a student of UA Academy. This gives you skill proficiencies in Arcana and Nature, as well as an expanded spell list if you pick up any spells. Now it's time to jump into some stats, and with point buy from the player's handbook, we are somewhat limited, so keeping all of that in mind, we're actually going to dump strength and boost dexterity, bringing it to 13 and then get another plus one from our human variant. Then we're gonna take our constitution, bring it to 14, our intelligence, bring it to 13 because he is pretty smart. He does study very hard. And then our wisdom, we're gonna bump to 15 and then get another plus one from our human variant, leaving us with only one point left over. So we're gonna throw it into charisma because he is pretty charming, but at the same time, he is pretty awkward in a lot of situations. Then it's time to choose a starting class. And while an older version of Deku might have used rage to unleash the power from one for all, later in the show, it seems more like an energy coursing throughout him that he manages to master much better. That, mixed with all of his punches and kicks, we're gonna go with a monk. When you choose monk at first level, you get saving throws and strength and dexterity, and you get to choose two skills. So we're gonna grab acrobatics and stealth for those times that you kinda gotta sneak around, which I know isn't super often, but they still happen. Then at first level of monk, you get access to unarmored defense. So your armor class equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your wisdom modifier. Additionally, you get access to martial arts. So you can actually do some unarmed attacks using either your dexterity or or your strength, dealing 1d4 plus your modifier, but that dice increases as you level up in Monk. Then the last benefit of martial arts is that if you use your action to make an attack, you make one additional unarmed strike as a bonus action. Then at second level of Monk, you get access to Key, and this is the energy coursing throughout your body whenever you're trying to harness the abilities of one for all. You can use
use that energy for a flurry of blows, allowing you to spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as your bonus action instead of one, patient defense, allowing you to take the dodge action as a bonus action, or step of the wind, allowing you to take the disengage or dash action as a bonus action, and your jump distance is doubled for the turn. You only have two key points at the moment, but they always equal the amount of levels you have in Monk. Then the last benefit you get from second level is unarmored movement, boosting your overall movement speed by 10 feet. Then at third level of Monk, you get access to a monastic tradition, also known as a Monk subclass. And I was tempted to go with Way of the Open Hand, because at high levels, you can do a full-blown 1 million percent smash, which essentially kills everything with one strike that you can activate on your second action. But then I saw scenes like this, and like this, and I could not help but go with Way of the Astral Self. Because when you take this subclass, you get access to Arms of the Astral Self. So now you can use your Wisdom modifier for attacks if you activate these Astral Arms. And this is really just your ability to harness the quirk within you, because you can also use your Wisdom modifier for making Strength checks and Strength saving throws, and you can punch 5 feet further away than normal. Then the last thing you get at 3rd level is Deflect Missiles, allowing you to block some projectiles a bit easier. Then at 4th level of Monk, you get access to an Ability Score Improvement, and since Wisdom is pretty much used for everything as an Astral Monk, we're just going to boost our Wisdom by 2 points. And additionally, you get access to Slow Falls, so now you don't have to worry about falling such a great distance because you can reduce the damage by quite a bit. Then at 5th level of Monk, you get access to an Extra Attack, which is super important because now you can attack twice as your action, and you can hit so hard that you stun your enemies with Stunning Strike, which you also get at this level. And finally, your punches are even stronger because your Martial Arts die gets increased from a 1d4 to a 1d6. Then at 6th level of Monk, your unarmored movement boosts your speed by 15 feet instead of 10 feet, and you get key empowered strikes. So now your punches are essentially magical because that energy is just coursing throughout you. And additionally, you get another feature from your way of the astral self, visage of the astral self. So you can see in darkness, but just play this off as you being a bit extra glowy from the energy coursing within you, or you have advantage on insight or intimidation checks, both of which really work, because a lot of times when an enemy sees how powerful Deku is, they're pretty intimidated, and in general, Deku is pretty insightful. And you also get Word of the Spirit, making it so your voice is amplified, which I guess can help in some ways, but it doesn't really factor in that much. Then at 7th level of Monk, you get Evasion. So now if you needed to make a Dexterity saving throw, you automatically take just half of the damage you would have, and if you succeed on that saving throw, you take zero damage. Additionally, at 7th level, you get Stillness of Mind. So you can use your action to stop being charmed or frightened, which is actually pretty spot on, because people have tried to mind control him, and he was able to break free. Then at 8th level of Monk, you get another ability score improvement, so we're going to boost up our wisdom one more time, maxing it out, because that's very useful for everything Monk, and especially Way of the Astral Self. And then at 9th level of Monk, you get a boost to your unarmored movement. You're now so fast, you gain the ability to move along vertical surfaces and across liquids. And speaking of that boost, at 10th level, your unarmored movement goes from 15 feet to 20 feet, and you get purity of body. Because that energy within you courses through your body in a way that makes you immune to disease and poison. Then at 11th level of Monk, your unarmed attacks get boosted from a 1d6 to a 1d8, and you get another feature from your way of the astral self, body of the astral self. So now you can activate full cowling, having that energy course throughout your entire body, and also giving you the benefits of deflect energy so you can reduce any elemental damage that you would have taken, and you get empowered arms, allowing you to deal one martial arts die worth of extra damage once per turn when you strike with your astral arms, making it a bit more smash-like. Then at 12th level of Monk, you get access to another ability score improvement, so we're just going to boost up our dexterity by two points, because even if we're not using our astral arms, it still helps our armor class and being able to dodge attacks. And then at 13th level of Monk, you get access to Tongue of the Sun and Moon, so you can speak and understand all languages just for the sake of dubbing anime in multiple languages. Then at 14th level of Monk, your unarmed movement gets boosted from 20 feet to 25 feet, and you get access to Diamond Soul, granting you proficiency in all saving throws, and you can re-roll a saving throw if you fail by spending one key point. Then at 15th level of Monk, you get access to Timeless Body, so you can't be aged magically and you don't suffer any frailty in old age, which would have definitely been helpful for All Might. Then at 16th level, we get another ability score improvement, so of course we're going to go ahead and throw that into our dexterity which mostly just helps our armor class since we're an Astral Monk. Then at 17th level, the damage on your unarmed strikes gets boosted from 1d8 to 1d10, and you get another feature from your Way of the Astral Self, Awakened Astral Self. This is when you really start to unlock the power 
of One for All. It allows you to summon all of the features of Way of the Astral Self all at once, and it gives you plus two bonus to your armor class and Astral Barrage, allowing you to attack three times as your action instead of twice, and with Flurry of Blows, you're attacking five times. Then at 18th level overall, we're actually going to jump into a multi-class, because currently in the anime, Deku has started to unlock some other quirks within his ability, and we need to be able to pull that off by jumping into Druid. This will allow us to utilize our wisdom for any spell casting, and the spell casting is how we're going to utilize these quirks. We only have three levels to play with, so we're going to have to make good use of them. We get access to two cantrips, which we're going to take Gust, because there's plenty of times where Deku blasts forward a surge of air to hit his enemies, and we're going to grab Thorn Whip, because one of the other quirks that he unlocks is Black Whip, allowing him to reach out and grab his enemies or any other objects. I was tempted to go a completely different route to get this quirk, putting some more points into Charisma, multiclassing into Warlock, and using the Eldritch Blast with an invocation to pull people in, and it could even work because you're kind of making a deal or a pact in order to receive the quirk in the first place. But Deku's still working on saving people with a smile, so charisma isn't really his forte, at least not quite yet. Then when it comes to first level spells, I would just grab Entangle to amp up that Black Whip a little further, and follow it up with Jump and Long Strider to boost your overall physical abilities. Then at second level of Druid, you get to choose a Druidic Circle, also known as a subclass. And there's not too many that apply super well. You could say that it's the Circle of Dreams because Deku kind of enters this dreamscape when he's talking to the other users of his quirk, but I kind of like the animation of using one for all and how it's kind of sparkly and shiny, so I'm going to go with Druid Circle of Stars. Choosing this subclass gives you access to the Guidance Cantrip, and you can use Guiding Bolt if you want to, but it also allows you to take on a starry form, which just kind of felt like a fun way to pull off this animation. You get to pick a specific type of form, either Archer, Chalice, or Dragon. If you choose the Archer, it allows you to make ranged spell attacks, which I guess doesn't really apply that much unless you're counting it as those air blasts that you're doing. Chalice will allow you to boost up the amount of hit points you restore to others, but frankly, I'd probably just stick with Dragon, because if there's any spell that you have to concentrate on, you can't roll less than a 10 on that concentration saving throw. Then at 3rd level of Druid and 20th level of this version of the build, you get access to 2nd level spell slots. So we're just going to grab Gust of Wind for the whole smash with air thing. And you may have noticed that we kind of forgot about that feat. Well, Deku takes a hell of a beating and keeps on coming most of the time, so in this version of the build, I would take Tough. But I would use that feat for something very different in the other version of the build, which is a bit more spoiler heavy. So if you don't want to be spoiled as to what other quirks are within One for All, you can feel free to skip ahead, as I'll include chapters into this video. So this is your full-blown warning, this is going to be some spoilers for the other version of this build. Because the other quirks that are locked within One for All are Gear Shift and Fa Jin, which both boost up Deku's overall speed and store up kinetic energy. Then there's also Danger Sense, and of course Black Whip, which we already touched on. And then there's Smoke Screen from the sixth user of One for All, allowing Deku to emit smoke from his body. And then finally, the last quirk of the seventh user is Float, essentially granting the ability to fly or levitate. So in order to pull off all of these, we're going to have to chip away at those levels of Monk, because the start of this build is going to be very similar, because we still want to keep with the general idea and concept. So we're only going to take our Monk levels all the way up to 12th level. This stops just before Tongue of the Sun and Moon, so no more dubbing, we're sticking to subtitles, and we do lose out on our awakened astral self. But we still have Body of the Astral Self, so I still feel like we're covering the full cowling concept. But it does unfortunately also reduce our martial arts die from a 1d10 to a 1d8. Keeping all of that in mind, we have 8 levels to play around with. To cover the Danger Sense quirk that you get from the 4th user of One for All, we're going to take 2 levels of Barbarian. Or at least that's what I would have done, but that would require us to completely rework all of our stats, and I don't want to do that. Because even though I don't usually focus on optimization, that just hurts my soul a little too much for how unoptimized it would be. Because we still need the rest of the stats for the most part. So instead, we're going to take all 8 levels that we have and pump them into Wizard. This will give us access to plenty of spell casting, and specifically when we're choosing a subclass for our wizard, we're going to go with War Magic. This gives us the feature Arcane Deflection, allowing us to boost our armor class by 2 or our saving throw by 4, but the only downside is that once you do this, you can't cast spells or other cantrips until the end of your next turn. 
but that doesn't matter too much since we have so many levels in Monk. Additionally, this grants us tactical wit, which fits very well with Deku because he studies so many quirks and abilities and tries to understand every hero and villain out there. Granting us a slight bonus to our initiative rolls, equal to our intelligence modifier, which isn't that massive, but it's still helpful. And then when you hit 6th level of wizard, you do get power surge, which will allow you to deal extra force damage once per turn when you deal damage with a spell. That damage equals half of your wizard level, so it's a minor boost, but it's still pretty cool. But jumping back into those quirks, for both Gear Shift and Fa Jin, which boost your overall speed and whatnot, you can grab spells like Haste and Kinetic Jaunt. For Black Whip, you can still use that feat, but instead of using it for Tough, we'd use it for Magic Initiate and still grab spells from the Druid spell list, granting us Thorn Whip for Black Whip, as well as Gust and Gust of Wind. For Smoke Screen, we can grab Fog Cloud from the Wizard spell list. And finally, for the Float Quirk, we can grab Fly or Levitate. Either one works. The only thing we really have to worry about is Danger Sense, but with eight levels of Wizard, you get access to fourth level spell slots, so you can use Divination or Arcane Eye to get a better sense of what's dangerous around you. Personally, I'm more of a fan of where we are currently in the anime as far as the builds. You don't really have to sacrifice very much with it while still being plenty fun to play around with. But I know there was multiple builds in this video, so if you want easy access to those, feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description below. Just like the especially awesome, Keylon, Lumiere 97, The Dino 21, Salvador, and Yaksha Senpai. Or going above and beyond that, there's my Dungeon Master level patrons that I actually play D&D with. Benjamin, Daniel Galvin, Devin Happy, Eric Wade, Gamestake, Michael, Remiritus Games, and Tristan Bennett. And then finally, going above and beyond absolutely anything I could possibly imagine is my god tier level patron, Kilo Kilo. He is so freaking awesome, and I cannot thank him enough. Let me know what you think about this build in the comments down below, or if you have any other builds you'd like to see in the future, let me know down there as well, which is also where this was recommended plenty of times. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping to roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to use one for all and play as Izuku Midoriya, also known as Deku in Dungeons and Dragons.